station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. We are ready for the event. Boise State University and Timberline High School. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Okay. Station, this is Boise State University and Timberline High School. How do you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. Welcome to the space station. How do you hear us? Good. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to ask you questions. Are you ready for the first question? We are ready for the questions. My name, my name is Tori, and my question is, have there been any major incidents on the ISS? Well, luckily, we haven't had any major incidences on the International Space Station. They have had some issues on previous space stations, but we train a lot in case we, uh, we have one. And just yesterday, uh, we did some practice simulation scenarios up here where we had a depressurization of the space station and a fire. Hi, my name is Ali, and my question is, what do crew members from different countries do to overcome cultural and political differences to successfully work together on scientific and mission objectives? Well, the short answer is we spend a lot of time together and uh, the crew become very close, almost family members before we even launch. And when we're up here, if there's uh, things that we want to talk about, we're very comfortable sitting at the dinner table and talking our issues through and, and finding a direction uh, forward. Uh, the training is very intense, and, uh, and there's all kinds of issues that we work through. So by the time we get up here, we're, uh, we're ready to work through anything. And honestly, it's so much fun up here that there's very little to talk about. My name is Valerie, and my question is, what is your favorite experiment you've done in space? My favorite experiments are the ones where I can actually see immediate results from, because a lot of the data analysis for experiments on the space station happens on the ground where the primary scientists are located. We're really like laboratory technicians. But uh, so my favorite one has been a spheres experiment where we actually get to uh, deploy miniature satellites inside the space station and then the ground controls them and uh, gathers data that way. But it's always fun to see how those satellites operate inside the space station. My name is Hannah and my question is, how do astronauts deal with blood from cut or bloody noses? Well, uh, hopefully we won't get too many of those, although some people every now and then it happens to them, they might hit their head. Uh, so if it's something minor, we can go ahead and uh, put Band-Aid on there. We also get some training on how to put stitches in people if we had to. Uh, but usually if they're minor, you can take care of them just like you would back on Earth. My name is Levi, and my question is, what is the most difficult part of your job day to day? Well, the difficult part uh, of the job today is, is uh, we are working several experiments, several maintenance tasks, and several operation tasks all in a given day. And so between each task, we go, have to go through a transition, getting the right tools, getting the right things that we need to complete that task. And so that's the hard part, is switching gears so many times. Hi, I'm Alora, and my question is, are there any language barriers with working with other um, people from other countries, and how do you get around them? So certainly anytime you're dealing with other cultures, there can be barriers. Um, we have uh, four, three different languages, native speakers, and four actually very fluent languages up here on the space station. Um, we typically try to, if I'm speaking to the Russians, I'll speak Russian. Uh, typically they'll speak English to me. Um, Nemo, our Japanese uh, astronaut, he speaks uh, Russian or English, whatever, and we, most of us can't speak Japanese to him. So uh, we just have really smart crew members that can speak your language. That helps out a lot. 
Hi, my name's Angel McComas. My question is, what math have you used beyond eighth grade math for your work on the space station? <laughs> That's a, a great question. And so on a day-to-day -day basis, we're not sitting there doing math calculations, but in order for the space station to be built, there was a lot of math that had to be done. But for us to do our job, having an understanding of math helps us better understand the experiments we're running. We were talking about uh, thinking logically, uh, working through problems. You learn all of that through using math. So math is the, uh, the language of science and it's super important whether or not you use it every single day. Hi, my name is Kendra and my question is, what, happen if, what happens if mission control loses power? Uh, if mission control loses power, uh, that, obviously that's a big deal for us. Uh, but we do have uh, satellite centers and uh, satellite mission controls that are set up so that we could transfer control to those centers or to those air, uh, other buildings to uh, to maintain control of the station. That's one level of con of uh, of uh, contingency uh, preparedness that we have. The other level is, is the station's very robust. It's got a lot of systems that can operate by themselves for a little bit. And, uh, and we can uh, downgrade into some very basic manual modes if we have to uh, until we get, the, uh, get control back. But uh, good question, thank you. Hello, sirs, my name's Dylan Pedro from Timberline High. Um, I actually have a two-part question for you. Uh, first, is it uh, hard to adapt to the International Space Station? And secondly, uh, what's it living there like? Um, I would say adapting to the International Space Station is definitely a process. Uh, for me personally, uh, it took about three days before I was comfortable using the bathroom. Another, uh, those same three days it took me for my, uh, to be able to sleep okay on the space station. After about a month, I felt comfortable moving around, um, not uh, bumping into things and being able to have control of myself. And then it took about two months before I really had solid habits where I I consistently knew where I put my, my stuff and I'd turn around and it wouldn't have float, floated away. Um, living on the space station is very busy. There's a lot of work we have to do. It's a very important work, so that's very rewarding. And uh, when we do get the opportunity to look out the window, it is absolutely amazing. My name is Alex and my question is, what is the most surprising result from an experiment you conducted in microgravity? Man, I got stuck with the hard question. Um, so we do really at any given time, we have literally hundreds of science experiments going on. And I worked on a couple, one working with fire and how it behaves in this microgravity type environment. And it, it was, what was cool about it is that the scientists was seeing it real time and they were seeing things they didn't expect and we were changing the parameters as we were working it. A similar thing with fluids that, uh, the scientists didn't know what was going to happen, and when they saw it, it was a huge surprise for them. So we're learning stuff every single day, and that's what makes it exciting. My name is Annabella, and my question is, is exploring space everything you imagine it to be? Uh, yes, it is, and so much more. Uh, the International Space Station is a great uh, location to do research, to really uh, look at how our bodies respond in space, how to keep them in good shape, and how to prepare ourselves for longer duration missions. And I think we're ready. We need to start ramping it up here, start getting ready our moon program going and getting our Mars program going. We're ready to explore deeper. My name is Grace, and I have a two-part question for you. How many Gs did you pull on the launch, and was it hard on your body? So on launch in the, in the Soyuz spacecraft, we had about four Gs. Um, I didn't think it was that hard on our bodies, uh, pr primarily because those Gs were, were right through our chest towards our back as opposed to in a, in a fighter jet, if you're f experiencing Gs, it would typically be from your head down towards your toes, which is harder to tolerate. Um, but it was a comfortable ride. It was uh, it's certainly, there's a lot of adrenaline, so that probably helped. Hi, my name is Beth, and I have a question for you. Um, how long are each of your missions on the ISS? Yep, so most missions nowadays, they're about uh, five and a half months. Uh, Mark and I have been here for about uh, five months, so we have another couple weeks to go. 
And uh, Scott over here is about a month into his five and a half months. Hello, my name is Christopher, and my question for you is, how do you deal with conflicts with other astronauts while in outer space? Well, like I said before, we are a family up here. We deal with it exactly the same way. Uh, you know, we uh, have patience, we have tolerance, and open communication. And, uh, and we make fun of each other, and we make each other laugh, and that's how we get through it. Hi, my name is Owen. Uh, if there was any emergency on a space station, is there any type of ev evacuation happen, maybe? Yes, for each of our emergency cases, our major three cases, um, we're always maintaining the possibility of ne the need to evacuate. And the means for us to do that would be using the same spacecraft that brought us up to the space station. It remains docked the entire time we're here. Uh, it'll bring us back nominally, but if we have to leave early, it's there for us as well. Hi, my name is Logan, and my question is, uh, do you guys have a sense of up or down? Not really. Um, so in here, we kind of, the writing is written up and down, and the lights are kind of on the ceiling, but... As you can see, Mark here is upside down, and his body feels the same whether he's in that position or standing upright like we are. So um, it, it's kind of cool where if you're working on something, you can flip upside down, go sideways, whatever gives you the best position. But uh, unless you're looking at writing or the uh, lights on the ceiling, you can't tell at all. Uh, my name is Marcelo, and my question is, does living in microgravity affect your mental health, mental state? I would say absolutely. <laughs> it is so much fun up here. The work is really interesting. I get to hang out with all my best friends, and uh, it's a very unique opportunity, and uh, it's truly an honor. So my mental state is really good up here. Hi, my name's Josiah, and um, does, the, does NASA or any other space agency plan to add any new pieces to the space station, and will the space station ever be retired? So I know there's a, uh, we, we had a long wait for another Russian module to be attached, and we've got some crew members that are kind of in limbo um, waiting for that opportunity to launch because they're specialists on that. Um, and there are plans to, to retire the space station. The space station was engineered for a, um, a set period of time, and we definitely are working through the process of figuring out how we're going to deorbit it someday. Hi, my name is Luke, and my question is, is there something you really wished you could bring aboard the ISS but couldn't? Man, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I don't know, maybe a couple uh, hamburgers and a pizza. You know, we can't bring those up here. So um, fresh food is always really, really nice. Hi, my name is Nicholas. And uh, my question is, what has been the most exciting part about living in space? The most exciting part uh, about living in space is you get to float. Just. You don't have any pressures on you. You're just, your body's free to move around, and it's just so different than living in gravity. Uh, it's uh, definitely the most uh, interesting part. Hi, my name is Sydney, and my question is, what education is required to work on the International Space Station? You have to have a minimum of a bachelor's degree in a technical field like um, biological science, uh, physics, um, sometimes even computer science will work, mathematics definitely. Um, and I, I'm reluctant to tell you a definitive answer for, because I'm sure there's uh, some things I would leave out. But the minimum requirement is a uh, bachelor's degree. Hi, my name's Jack. Um, what's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you on the International Space Station? So for me, the weirdest thing that's happened to me on the space station is, uh, well, okay, so if you look inside this module we're in right now, you can see there's, it's kind of square-shaped. There's two walls that are defined, there's a floor, 
and a ceiling just, just by definition. And there's a border between them. But there's some modules, especially the Russian modules and our airlock, that they're circular. So it's when you're working in one spot, it's harder to tell that you've transitioned to a different area. So it's a very strange feeling for me when I work in the airlock, maybe I'm trying to gather tools, and then I won't recognize that I've been working kind of over time, drifted to the ceiling without realizing. When I come out of the airlock and I look inside the rest of the space, space station, I can't figure out where I am because nothing's where it's supposed to be. I was expecting everything to be flipped over. So that uh, three or four second mental processing is a very strange feeling. Hi, my name is Reiko, and my question is, does debris hit the ISS, and if so, how do you fix the damage? So yes, debris does hit the ISS. Um, if we go out in a spacewalk, sometimes you can see uh, little areas where we've been hit uh, by debris. You can see it on some of the windows that we have. Uh, luckily, they've been small enough, and the space station is designed to take some of those smaller hits. Um, if we were to get hit where it actually punctured the hole, uh, we do have some kits to try to repair it, but it all depends on how big the hole is. My name is Isabel, and my question is, do you get bored being in the same place 24-7? And if so, how do you combat boredom? So when you think of the International Space Station, you think of this small little thing floating around in space. But it's actually pretty huge. Uh, we have got uh, one, two, three, four, five, seven or eight modules plus the Russian segment. And there are loads of areas that we can go that, that you know, I've been here for two months and I haven't seen everything yet. And uh, with the stowage of all of the supplies that we need to use on a day-to-day -day basis, we're always digging into little corners that uh, we didn't know exist or we're seeing the station in a, in a new light. So um, the, there's no boredom because we're always changing gears. We're always moving from operation to maintenance to science and then back again. Um, uh, but uh, And the location is... Uh, it's just, you know, with our friends and our, our, fa our family uh, on email and, uh, and video conferences and uh, working with the ground team uh, makes it uh, very exciting all around. Hi, name, my name is Caden Bishop, and my question is, what is the legal system on board the International Station, Space Station? It turns out I don't think Joe got all of the hard questions after all. Um, so... I'm happy to tell you that we haven't, I haven't had a need to, to do any research on that. Um, I really think, I think, that is most likely the legal systems of our nationalities. Um, it's kind of like asking what the legal system is at your place of work, because this is our place of work, and if something strange did happen, then, uh, then I guess we'd find out then. We'd have time to figure it out. Hello, Joe, Mark, Maker. This is Swanee, and I have a question for you. I would like to know who does the best flips, and I need a demonstration, please. That's an easy one. Uh, Mark is our professional, and we'll uh, let's see what he can do for us without smashing his melon open. And he stuck the landing with two and a half. Very well done. That's a perfect 10 from the judges. Hey, we just have another minute. Uh, would you uh, be able to get like a drink bag or something from the uh, Node 1 to show what you have to drink your liquids out of? So I need, uh, Joe's going to go make that happen. My first thought was we're doing maintenance on the potable water dispenser, so I didn't think we'd uh, be able to do that for you, but Joe already has something ready, so he'll be right back. And Mark, anything you want to add? Tell everybody here down in Boise, Idaho. Um, the, there was a good question about whether or not we ever get bored, uh, but events like this are really fun for us. It's great for us to interact with other people. We are somewhat socially isolated, only seeing these five wonderful other people along with ourselves. So uh, anytime we get to interact with, as those were fantastic questions, by the way.
Okay, so you see here Joe's pushing out the water. It actually looks like an orange drink. And surface tension is keeping it together in a sphere. Let's get you get a little closer for you. And you can see it's uh, still holding it to the straw a little bit, but it wants to take a sphere. And you can see some second order responses as, uh, as it moves around a little bit and oscillates. Uh -oh. <laughs> and he sucks it down. And it was it was a terrible bubble. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Hey, it was uh, good seeing you, Swanee. Hope all is well. Thank you so much for letting us ask you questions today. It was definitely our pleasure. Thanks very much for the questions. Station. This is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from Boise State University and Timberline High School. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.